two, one. Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is your host, Scott Bauer, with the Hashtag Invest This Podcast. Today, 28th episode. Crazy to think we're already there. I have James Hawk with Flip Fuel. How you doing, James? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing fantastic over here in sunny Phoenix. It's uh, not too hot, actually, which is nice. Where are you Guess at? What? <laughs> I'm in humid Florida, and it's pretty hot. <laughs> Nice, nice. Well, <laughs> welcome to the call. Why don't you go ahead and give the listeners a little bit more kind of a back, about your background and uh, what you're focused on now. Sure, man. Thanks for having me, by the way. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So, I'm James Hawk. Um, we, uh, I have a business partner, Hunter Hayden. Uh, we're out of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we, we primarily wholesale. That's about 85% of our business. Uh, we also do some rehabs and some wholesales and a little bit of new construction as well. Um, we have a team of about nine people now. Um, so we, I've been full-time, um, you know, investing since about 2010. Uh, I partnered up with, uh, you know, Hunter around 2013. Um, and that's when we really started growing the business. But before that, I was actually, uh, you know, a supervisor at a bridge fabrication company. So I work for a company called PDM Bridge. Uh, we actually did the Woodrow Wilson um, in DC, which is pretty cool. Is featured on Mega Builders. Nice. Um, yeah, so it was, it was pretty cool. Um, and, and it really just came down to um, always had a passion for real estate uh, and I was going to be become an agent, right? Um, but I had a friend that was, uh, you know, investing. He was really wholesaling. Um, he really wouldn't share too much with me. Like I seen he was doing extremely well. Um, but it was the first time I'd ever heard about this concept of wholesaling, right? I thought if you were going to get into real estate, you really need to become an agent. Um, and I had no idea there was a way that you could actually flip houses with, you know, not having any money. Um, right because I had like a thousand bucks, you know, in my bank account when I started um, doing this and, uh, you know, grinded it out, uh, consumed as much information as I could. Uh, it took me about six uh, months before I did my first deal. Um, that deal was $4,000. And uh, after that, I did my second deal, which was a two house package for 20,000 and then quit my job and uh, went full time. So <laughs> might nice. not suggest that for everybody, but it, it worked out for me. Um, everyone thought I was crazy and, uh, you know, now here we are. Right. Right. But so that was, you started in 2010 flip. Yeah. 2010. 2010. So crazy enough. Uh, when I first got started, my first check ever was 5,400 bucks, uh, which is crazy. And I actually have it sitting right next to me as a constant reminder that this shit works, right? That this stuff right. is the real thing. Sure. Um, 5,400 bucks. And then the next one, I mean, they were all like 10, 12, 15, you know, ever since then. So, um, it's cool to see, you know, you kind of jumped right in, right? I mean, you jumped right in and started making money and then quit your job and you went, you burned the boats, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, absolutely. And that, and that's really what it comes down to, right? right. Is, um, just the action consistent, consistent and you know just action towards what you're uh, what you're trying to achieve um and, and don't get me wrong I was working so when I very first started before I actually I went full-time in 2010 um and then I think it was late 2008 2009 um I was actually working night shift at the bridge company so I would work nights uh get home at like two three in the morning then I would go to sleep and then basically all day long before I went into work, I would, you know, work on the, you know, wholesale. Right. That's a busy day, man. That's a lot yeah. of, that's a busy day. But I mean, what you would say, that's what you have to do, right? You know, anybody out there that thinks that this is easy. Cause I know I talk to some people and they, you know, they see what I've done or they see what's going on. They, they, they for some reason think it's easy. And that's just right. so far from the truth, right? The sacrifices you have to give up and the, you know, the long nights, the long days, the, you know. Sure. You know, no, it's, it's a hustle, man. There's, yeah. there's no doubt about it. I mean, I like telling everybody um, it's not easy, but it's a simple business. Yeah. You know? Yep. Absolutely. So there was basically a four year period where you were by yourself, 2010 to 2014, and then, you know, I definitely want to talk about that for a minute because I've heard from several different very successful people that once they linked up with somebody that was a good counter to their strengths, their business really catapulted. Would you? So let's talk about that for a minute. 
Sure, man. I mean, I think with a partnership, um, you hear a lot of good and bad, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, there's plenty of partnerships that have went horrible. Um, and then there's ones that go great. So um, I'm fortunate that I'm in a position uh, with a business partner that it's worked out extremely well. Um, we complement each other's skill sets um, and, you know, each other's weaknesses, right? So um, where, where I'm strong, um, you know, he might be weaker and where, you know, I'm weaker, he might be stronger. And, you know, it's not just even complimenting the skill sets, but it's also just making sure um, the first thing was making sure our values were, were aligned. Mm -hmm. um, in, in that we have the same vision, right? Um, because if you're pulling each other um, every different way and you're not aligned with the vision, it's never going to work. So uh, I would say other than the values, um, definitely the vision is, uh, you know, going to be of, you know, extreme, extremely important. And it, and it has, right? So we can divide and conquer, um, it, it's basically put us in a position where, you know, I can work on one thing, he's working on the other. Um, and then it just helps you grow that much faster. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would say there's a lot of truth to that. That's, it can be, it can be kind of difficult from a mindset standpoint, right. To, to break away and kind of let go of some of that control. But at the same time, like what you're saying, if you compliment each other, that's the perfect fit. Sure. Right. No, I, I, absolutely. And you know, every, so as an entrepreneur, obviously everyone, you're like, you're strong minded, right? You're strong willed. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it can be, it can be a little bit of a struggle. So um, you really need to just keep yourself in check. Um, and, and now it's not just every decision is necessarily about you, right? It's also, you got to take someone else into consideration and also what's best for the business itself. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's why we're always making decisions, um, based on the actual business, not, not on individual needs. And I think that's where it really gets cloudy for people. Um, and you can start making big, big mistakes. Yeah, no, that's, that's huge. I mean, you really have to focus on the business itself and it's crazy to think that a business is almost like a person in and of itself right i mean it has to it has to thrive the same type of a way and you have to feed it constantly and sometimes you have to give up some sacrifice in order to feed it right um what would you say is one of the biggest struggles that you've had to, that you've gone into so far i mean with getting started because it was 2014 when you joined up with him it's now 2018 so you have four years of you know of growth What's been something that's been, um, you know, a big either decision you had to make or a big growth period that you guys have had to go through? I, I would say um, consistency and strategy um, right. has, ha, ha, you know, it isn't, it isn't at the point we are now. Mm -hmm. um, but we did a lot of back and forth in the beginning. Like what partnered us up, believe it or not, was a rehab, right? So I got this property. Um, under contract, highly desirable area. It was a great deal. Um, you would hardly ever, and especially now, um, getting a, a deal in this area of, uh, you know, our market is extremely, extremely difficult, right? So um, I got this property under contract. Uh, we kept running into each other, uh, like on Craigslist, stuff like that, just seeing each other's deals. And, uh, you know, we just decided to meet up one day and I was like, Hey, I just got this property. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to get it under contract. You can meet me over there. We can meet up. Um, and that's what we did. So, uh, we walked the house together. You know, this is the first time we had ever like met in person, you know, so it, it's a little bit of a, you know, a funny story. Um, so we walked this house and I'm like, you, we just had this idea like, Hey, what if we rehab this house together? You know, like I, I'm pretty, I'm almost a hundred percent that I'm, I can get this pro this property under contract. Um, maybe you could bring the money to the deal. Um, you know, go raise the money and then we could do this deal together and split it 50, 50. Um, and, and we made that agreement and it was at that time going to be really nothing more than that. Um, we were just going to do this deal. There was no discussion and, you know, on partnering up or anything else, but we did that deal. Um, it went extremely well and, uh, we made a hundred thousand dollars off of that rehab. And that was the first property I'd ever rehabbed. Um, and the same for him as well. So it worked out. I mean, that's, that's a home run, <laughs> right? A hundred thousand dollars will get you excited pretty fast. And, right. uh, the, so then we literally partnered up and, 
Um, we were – so the struggle, getting back – and sorry, I wasn't trying to get off topic. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it happens. So, yeah, and the reason, the reason I'm telling that story is because, like, how good rehabbing a house was to us um, right from the beginning. So now are we rehabbing? We're doing this much wholesaling. All right, now we're going back – more wholesaling and it's like it was this constant um push pull on like where making sure that so our vision just wasn't 100 percent aligned really more so or and, and maybe not even necessarily as much that is like we we just hadn't really found our way together yet right um so Finally, we're at the point now um, for the last uh, year and a half or so where we're 100% dialed in, everything is, in, uh, is, is aligned, and uh, it's working out well. But I would say um, just the strategy um, and being consistent with that has probably been uh, you know, the, biggest, the biggest struggle. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, uh, that sounds to be pretty common. You know, I've had a lot of uh, wholesalers and a lot of real estate investors that have been on here so far that kind of struggle with the same type of thing. Consistency is the hardest part, right? Because everybody goes out and they do one big deal. They're like, yes. And then it's done. And then you're like, right. okay, now what? Right. So how to put that consistency in place is, is definitely a difficult thing. Um, do you think, and you said 85% of what you're doing is wholesaling? Right. Yeah. Yeah. About 85% okay. now. And, and you know, it, we could probably almost say 90, but I mean, it's, yeah, we primarily wholesale, but we right. do a little bit of new construction, a little bit of rehabbing and uh, you know, a little wholesaling, but primarily we are uh, running a wholesale business. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess let's talk about the market right now, because I would say that, yeah, you know, in the market that we're in, wholesaling is fantastic. Here in Phoenix, we have very low inventory and, uh, you know, there's a lot of buyers out there. Therefore, there's a lot of people that would love to pick up the deals, right? Even if sure. they're a little bit skinny, there's still people that are hungry for deals. So, um, you know, the market tells me that. Is it the same way down in Jacksonville? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, uh, so, so we're, uh, our primary market is most of Northeast Florida. Um, we also do a little bit in like Central Florida, um, Orlando area, and then every once in a while, even a little bit in South Florida, like Palm Beach area. But yeah, it's the same way. I mean, Florida is extremely hot. Um, mm -hmm. I know Phoenix is incredibly hot. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's always usually <laughs> one of the hottest markets in the country. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing here, man. Extremely low inventory, like buyers are praying just absolute premiums for, uh, you know, tighter deals because there's just not a whole lot of really good deals out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and I guess when you talk about wholesaling and your first one was a hundred thousand dollar home run. So the listeners out there that don't know about what wholesaling can give you, why would you want to do that every time? Or why would you want to take a wholesale fee? What is an average wholesale fee in your, in your market? Well, an average wholesale fee for us personally, I, I mean, I would say in the market, um, I, I would say probably in the lower teens, maybe around 10 for probably the average, you know, wholesaler that's, you know, not doing a ton of deals here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, that's just really me, um, me basing it off of just, you know, a few variables that I'm aware of, but I mean, right. I know us personally, uh, we usually stay around at least 20 grand, um, is our average deal size. Um, and, and so that other deal that was actually that hundred thousand dollar one was, uh, was actually a rehab, yeah, um, right. but we have had, um, over the last couple of years, we've had, I think four um, wholesale deals were that were actually over a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's great. I haven't, I haven't had a wholesale deal hit that yet, but I'm sure it's in the, it's in the picture or it's in the cards at some point. Oh, right? sure, man. No, it will. I mean, obviously it's just like anything, right? Like it's inevitable yeah. that eventually it'll happen. Right. And I know that you and I talked about this before and you had mentioned that you have nine people on the team, but will you go into that a little bit? How, what those people, you know, what your organization looks like and, you know, a brief synopsis of that? Sure, sure. So we have two outside salespeople. We have a, a full-time dispositions. Um, obviously, the outside sales are, um, they're going out, they're meeting with homeowners, they're putting properties under contract. 
uh, the dispositions is, uh, you know, selling the wholesale properties. Um, we also, by the way, um, and I didn't even mention this in the beginning, we also have a brokerage um, that we opened not long ago that we're using to monetize our leads. Um, and also, um, you know, obviously any retail leads um, or, uh, you know, rehabs that we do in house or whatever, like that way we can just push those over there. Um, and are you guys also, both licensed? No, no, I, we are not. So yeah. in the state of Florida, you do not need to be licensed um, to own a brokerage. So we are not in the day to day right. of the brokerage. We have, a, you know, a close friend that is uh, our broker of record and he actually manages the brokerage for us. And then we'll just have a, you know, a high level meeting like every once a month um, and discuss, you know, certain, you know, KPIs and, um, you know, more, more just, um, you know, just a high level um, meeting. So <clears throat> anyway, we use that, uh, you know, especially for like the double dip, right? Which yeah. what we like to call the double dip um, is selling the wholesale property, but then also, you know, our dispositions guy, which is a licensed realtor working with that buyer building that relationship. So if it's a flip, we're also getting the listing on the back end. Now we made two fees off of that property. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, anyway, going back to the rest of the team, we do have a, a couple of people, uh, you know, with the brokerage, but we have the dispositions that's selling the wholesale properties. Then we also have a full-time transaction coordinator. Um, we have, <clears throat> which is managing all the transactions, making sure dealing with the sellers, the buyers, uh, making sure everything stays smooth and uh, we get to closing and obviously get paid. Uh, we have full-time marketing um, on staff. So, you know, I, I mean, marketing is really the lifeblood yep. of it, really any business, right? Mm -hmm. Not even just this business, any business. So um, for me, like, I feel like it's important to have somebody um, for marketing and just marketing alone, because if you're not consistent with your marketing, like you're never really going to build any momentum. Right. Yeah. hundred um, percent correct there. So, I mean, that's really the, the key to building a solid pipeline is, um, you know, you stay consistent with your marketing, you build up that momentum. Um, and then the more and more deals that you can do. Uh, so we also have a couple lead coordinators, um, obviously that are managing the phones and, um, and everything else, making sure doing all the follow up. Um, and then we also have a, you know, a data analyst, uh, that is, uh, interesting, basically going into all the County records for all of our areas and pulling like lists, um, you know, all of our like mailing lists and lists that we target for other marketing channels. Um, we, we have a, a VA that basically does that for us. Um, and the and data analyst is a VA. Yes. Yeah. yeah okay. She's a VA. Okay, cool. Well, that's kind of a good segue into let's talk about marketing for a minute. Um, I know, you know, my, me personally, I'm, I love direct mail always have. It's been very profitable. I, I enjoy that channel. Uh, but of course it's not the same for everybody. So what do you do? What has been your you know most profitable marketing channel so far and what do you use? Yeah. I mean, we, we do uh, a few different, we use a few different channels. We're actually on the radio right now. We we're heavy into Facebook. We've really dialed that in. Um, we, uh, yeah, we've really, really dialed in Facebook. I know a lot of people have a hard time with Facebook. Um, but you know, I somebody have like of, going after that on a daily basis. Cause it's, that's a tough one. The Facebook, I mean, it seems easy, but it's tough. No, we know it is. I mean, we have multiple campaigns running 24 seven on Facebook, um, primarily for sellers, but we do the same thing for buyers as well. Mm -hmm. Um, then we, so we're radio, Facebook, we obviously, we do PPC, Google, um, you know, we're always doing like SEO stuff. And then of course we, we also do a lot of mail, um, and then a little bit of, uh, you know, cold calling as well. So you're just kind of dabbling in all of it. So out of all of those channels, you'd be a great candidate to tell me what is the most profitable? I mean, what are your KPIs telling you in your market? Cause of course it's different for all the listeners out there. Sure, it's sure. going to be different for every market, but what are you finding? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. I mean, it's, it's a close call between mail and cold calling, but because we've done mail so much longer, right. um, you know, I mean, I'm just going to, 
obviously male, you know, just because that's, that's what we've had the longest uh, history with. Um, so we, we know those metrics year over year. Um, it's always consistently performed and um, I'm sure it will for, uh, for as long as male is around. Um, even though that it is really, really messy out there, right? Like people right. are walking to their mailbox, they're pulling out 10, 15 postcards and letters, um, you know, out of their mailbox every single day if they're an absentee owner or they have any kind of equity. So really what it comes down to is for us is how are we standing out amongst all those postcards and letters? Um, we write all of our own pieces in house. Mm -hmm. um, so we really put a heavy emphasis on making sure that, um, you know, we're perceived as the authority in our market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, right. And that's, that's huge. I mean, I think at the last, when I met, I saw you last time at the last meeting that we've met at, um, you were talking about kind of what your, how you were trying to stand out. Um, did you end up, putting that into, uh, into, I guess, into action with, you know, yeah, some credibility. Yeah. No, I mean, we have, uh, you know, we have very, you know, thorough like systems and processes in place that yep. there, there's certain key things, uh, you know, that we do that we know no one else is doing. Um, and, and, and really a lot of it is customer service oriented, right? Right. Um, you know, like you want to automate obviously as much as possible. Then at the same time, I believe um, firmly in there are certain um, steps, right, uh, or checkpoints in every uh, business's process that still should have that human touch, yeah. that interaction. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and it's just for rapport and customer experience. Right, right. Um, and that's huge. I appreciate you sharing all that information. And, um, where do you feel like you're going to go in the next five years? You know, if I was to say, Hey James, five years from now, what does it look like? What would you say? <laughs> it looks like we have, uh, about 2000 apartments. Um, is. and, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're wholesaling, uh, basically the entire state of Florida. It's pretty big. Love that. Love to hear that. And so um, now that's um, we're coming up on time. So let's segue into our lightning round. You all ready for that? Sure. sure. Cool. What is your hashtag invest this tip that you can uh, give to the listeners to keep them moving forward? Yeah. I mean, I would say uh, be consistent with your marketing uh, no matter what, right? Um, if you really want to be successful at any level in this business, it's and that is literally be consistent with your marketing. Mm -hmm. So no matter what it is that you're doing, just be consistent with it. Um, and you know, it, as long as it's proven and you know that it works, like obviously if you're sending out, you know, a crappy postcard and it's just not working, like I'm just saying in general, when marketing, you need to be consistent or you'll never really build momentum and find true success in this business. I mean, that's so, so much of the truth. It's very easy on down months, right? Like when things don't, sure. you're not getting deals to say, oh, that doesn't work, but you have to right. do it for a long period of time. And in the end, consistency will always win. So thank Especially you. Especially male, you know, I mean, yeah. you could, yeah. uh, I mean, here's the thing, like, it's so funny. Oh, here, I won't even get into it because that'll be a whole nother thing, but just go <laughs> ahead. Like light, lightning round. <laughs> All right. Um, what's a favorite book you've ever read and what's the impact it's been on your life or your business? Could more both. <clears throat> so there, there's really so many, man. Um, I mean, I could easily say traction because it's just a very, very straightforward, good, solid business book. You mean this um, one? Uh, or the rich dad, poor dad, they're all great, but I'll, I'll throw a unique one out there. Right. So there's a book called scaling up. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, this book is really going to touch on, um, how you should be building every business that you build, you should be building, building it, but not necessarily the intent, but the ability to sell it if you ever want to. Right. And I feel like that's important that's because if you're putting all your time and effort into building something like, you don't want to just have it be not valuable at all, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a pretty eye opening book. And, uh, you know, I highly recommend it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely huge. Kind of like with the e-myth, right? Same. I mean, it's yeah. It's different. very similar. It's very similar. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you for that. Um, of course you've had coaches, mentors, people that have been influential in your life. 
who's given you the best advice and what has that advice been? Who's given me the best advice? It's a, it's um, a tough one. I, I, I get it. Yeah, it, it, it really, it really is. Um, I, I would say one thing that, uh, you know, has always stuck with me um, is Kent Clothier told me one time, um, you know, I was in a conversation with him. He told me to make it a game, uh, you know, in bu- every business that we build, make it a game to replace yourself. Um, and, you know, that's always stuck with me. Um, and I keep that in the back of my mind. Um, you know, just about every day. Um, so in everything that you're doing, like you should always be thinking about how do you, how do I take this off of me, outsource it, um, you know, hire it out, whatever, because ultimately, um, and I'm adding this, this part in it, um, you're typically your own worst enemy. And a lot of the times, like for something to grow, you really just got to step out of the way. Yeah, that's huge. That's massive, actually. I appreciate you sharing that. That's a really good piece of advice. Make it a game to replace yourself. I like that. Um, How do you like to give back? What do you do? Uh, So we actually have a a charity program, like, for our house buying business that we offer homeowners um, that will donate. If they want to participate in it, we'll donate up to um, $1,000 at our discretion to the church or charity of their choice um, at closing. Um, and it'll come out of our funds. Uh, So that's, it's called the House's Help Program. Um, And it's really cool that I've shared it with other investors and they've actually uh, implemented it in their market and their business as well. So it's kind of like spreading around into different markets. And, uh, you know, we're pretty proud of that. Oh yeah, that's huge. That's definitely huge. So I appreciate you sharing that and appreciate you giving back. Um, How can our listeners reach you? If they want to find out more about what you're doing or if they want to, you know, how to, how to be build a charity program for themselves or whatever, where do they find you? Yeah, they can find me. I mean, pretty much, you know, all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, James Hawk, or, you know, at flip flip fuel. Um, You know, I'm, I'm very active Facebook, Instagram. So you could uh, DM me, reach out to me there and I'm more than happy to help. Awesome. Awesome. Well, James, hey, man, really appreciate you being here today. I mean, sharing everything about your transition going from, you know, working, building bridges, right, into uh, into the, the real estate space and kind of going from a solopreneur meeting, meeting your partner, partnering up and then watching the business explode. Um, you know, and just talking about the consistency that is needed to have a fueling business, something that really runs and I appreciate you sharing all that info. So no, man. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Uh, you know, it was, uh, it was definitely my pleasure and, uh, you know, I really appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you real soon and, uh, stay killing it, bro. All right, man. Thank (laughs) you. You too.